What up? Welcome back to the first episode. And we're rocking some Battlefield Trey Zon. And I'm not really good at this game. I tried my hardest. I was getting my skills up as the night went on. And I know that's not the real reason you come to these videos. It's for the military stories. So, uh, and I'm sorry that it's taken so long to put out a new video. So hopefully you're happy. If you're happy there's a new video, go ahead and take that one split second. Roll down, hit that thumbs up button. It takes little to no effort, and but it means a ton to me. So um, I appreciate it greatly if you did. Thank you, and let's rock and roll with these downrange gamers. So I left you last time. I was talking about my deployment in Kuwait, and that was at Ali Asalim. I was an armor. I had a whole bunch of stories, and I'm sure there's hundreds of stories that I forgot to tell you guys about while I was there, but I want to keep the story moving. And if I remember any of them, I'll just talk about them. So, like I said, I got deployed to Kuwait. Then I went back to Germany because my my I had a I was on two year orders in Germany, so I had to finish my two years. So I was there for about a year, I think, and then I got deployed to Ku Kuwait. And then I had to finish out the rest of my time there. And my six months in Kuwait counted towards my two years in Germany, which kind of stinks because. Being deployed to Germany was actually awesome, and I would have stayed there for the rest of my military career if I had the choice to, which I kind of did, but I kind of dropped the ball on it. So, like when you get orders in the Air Force, you have this thing called a dream sheet, and you fill out like the bases you would love to go to, and the military will take it under consideration to send you to those bases. So, like when I got Germany from Louisiana, I had Germany on my dream sheet. So they're like, okay, he will send him to Germany. He wants to go there. Boom, got orders there. So on that same dream sheet, I had Korea, but I never updated my dream sheet. Well, I did update my dream sheet when I was in Germany. So when my orders came down for my two years, they were going to pick my dream sheet and then, you know, send me to that base. But they never updated my sheet when I was in Germany. So they still had Korea on there. So when I get my orders in Germany, they're like, all right, you're going to Korea. I'm like, what? Korea? That wasn't on my dream sheet. They're like, oh, you know, I, they, I can't say nothing. And I was like, can I see my, you know, my sheet the bases i picked and it was all my bases i picked from louisiana when i was in louisiana and i just picked bases that were the easiest to get out of louisiana because i wanted to leave there so bad so i picked like the worst bases I'm like all right if orders come down from korea you know i'll get out of louisiana quickly so they never updated my sheet because when i'm in germany um they have to give me orders you know after two years i have to leave in louisiana you don't have to you could stay there forever so they never updated so they sent me to give me orders to korea i'm like great i'm going to korea so but the good thing about going to korea was it's a over it's a long what's it called a, a uh oh shoot i can't remember what the term of it is but for doing a year in korea they'll let you pick your base definitely after that for like all right you'll do a year in korea we'll let you pick exactly what base you want to go to after your year which is cool i'm like all right sweet so I dropped the ball on this too. I could have went anywhere. I could have went to, you know, like freaking Japan or I could have went to just like crazy places. Guam, you know, anywhere. Hawaii. I could have went to Hawaii, you know. I picked New Jersey. I totally regret doing that. But then again, I don't regret it. I'll tell you why later. But I picked New Jersey because I wanted to go home. Which was the stupidest, dumbest thing I could have ever did. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just thinking, oh, I could go home. Let me go home. Which is wrong. When you're in the military, take advantage of it. Go places you'll never go, you know, your regular life, you know. And I picked New Jersey. So, you know, I, I was happy at the time. You know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to Jersey. Yay. So once I got my orders in Germany to go to Korea and then New Jersey afterwards, I still had about four, three to four months left in Germany to finish out so that's what happens like they give your orders way in advance and i i've told you guys before like my job i'm security forces which is basically military police for the air force and my job on ramstein that was the name of the base in germany i was at ramstein was primarily law enforcement patrol and security on the base we didn't run the gates the bundeswehr ran the gates the bundeswehr is like the german army which were really cool sometimes i would have to go talk to those guys about things you know going on and they wanted me, like, I, some of them could speak English. And all they really wanted to do was go into the BX. The BX is the base exchange, like the store on base. 
because our products and our stuff is a lot cheaper on the base than it is in Germany just for the exchange rate and the, I don't know why else but they they really like I remember one of the Bundesfeer guys was like oh you could take me onto the base you know with broken English because they're a German we want to buy Levy jeans Levy I'm like what the hell I'm like what's Levy jeans they're like you know Levy jeans can you take us because they can't go and shop on there they need a military member you know to use their military ID card. and I couldn't figure it out I'm like Levy Levy he's like yeah Levy I'm like you mean Levi <laughs> Levi jeans yeah yeah but the Bundesfeer guys are really cool on the gates some of them were really into like American culture. They all wanted me to teach them how to dance. That was something else they wanted to learn. Like they, I taught them how to do the heel toe. That was big back then. A couple other moves. And they were cool. They would let me uh, play with their weapons. They they used to, well not play with them, but like check them out and hold them. They would uh, carry a G36. And uh, I think that's the standard w rifle that the German army carries. Yeah, the G36. That's what those guys had. I never fired a G36. A friend of mine, Richard Ryan, says that's one of his favorite weapons to fire. And um, so, but when I was holding it, it felt real, pl it felt real plasticky. The the clip is see-through, which is kind of smart. So you can see how much ammunition you have right like from your weapon. But, uh, and it had a weird sight on it. I remember the butt stock would fold in, which was pretty cool for those guys. Well, it was good for those guys because they had to search vehicles because they were on our gates. So it, it made it compact a little nicer. So on our gates, we actually had the German Bundeswehr. Uh, that that did our gates. I heard well, before I got the ramp sign, we would we would guard our gates. For some reason, we hired the Bundeswehr. To, I don't know if it was some uh, agreement with the country or something that they run the gates. But that was cool with me because being gate guard sucks. Definitely sucks. But uh, the Bundeswehr, we had these um, things called pop-up barriers where the barriers would just pop up. You know, if a car tried to run the gate, it would come out of the concrete. Like, they'd pop up really quick. And... I was working at a law enforcement patrol one day and a Bundeswehr popped up the pop-up bears. We're supposed to check them every night, but he popped it up with a vehicle like driving by like a, just like a civilian, you know, coming onto the base and, and popped up and got the vehicle lifted up in the air, destroyed the car. Whoever's car it was was destroyed. I guess the military had to pay for it, but the Bundeswehr did it. I guess they didn't understand how the controls worked on the system and it popped it up. And speaking of those pop-up bears, there was another night I was working security on the flight line and somebody runs the gate and they just run and like from from the gate and ramp sign one road will take you straight to the flight line like you don't even have to turn you can take one road straight to the flight line the flight lines where all the aircraft are and somebody runs the gate we get a call that they ran the gate like okay and they're heading towards the flight line like, whoa this is kind of scary now you never know like it could be a suicide bomber blow up of an aircraft I don't know so they drive to the flight line, get on the flight line now, and start driving towards the vehicle. At this point, deadly force is authorized. We are allowed to use deadly force. It's totally authorized because it's protection of a DOD asset vital to national security, basically the aircraft on that flight line. And that's just one of the, these are really big things that they drill in your head in the military, well, in being security forces. This is a pure fact when you know you can kill somebody. And it's protection of DOD assets vital to national security. Protection of DOD assets not vital to national security, but inherently dangerous to others. Protect, uh, protection of self and others. And I might be forgetting something. So basically, if somebody tries to blow up something that helps protect the United States, deadly force is authorized. If somebody tries to blow up something that could hurt a bunch of people, it's authorized. And if someone's trying to kill you or kill somebody else, it's authorized. Those are the, some of the rules. I might be forgetting one, which I should not be forgetting. But anyways, going off, uh, off topic there. And we're talking about the guy that ran the gate and he was heading towards the flight line at this point. So, you know, we're getting this on the radio. We're hearing this and I'm already, already thinking like, oh, snap, we might have to shoot somebody. If he drives towards a plane and breaks red, break red means there's like lines on the flight line. If you, if you cross over them without permission from us, we can arrest you automatically or you possibly shoot you. So, you know, and I'm thinking like, oh my God, we might have to shoot somebody. This is about to go crazy. The guy breaks red. He gets on a flight line. He's headed towards aircraft. I didn't get there in time. Somebody was there before me. You know, they just parked it. They just pull up in front of them, park their vehicle, jump out, weapons out. They, um, they get him out of the, his vehicle. He wasn't a threat. He was actually just a guy that was lost. We get on scene. They already got him handcuffed up. He was like a German guy. He didn't speak any English. I guess he didn't understand that he was driving onto a U.S. military base. Blew the gate. 
I guess the Bundeswehr didn't try and stop him. They called us up. So, I mean, if he kept driving towards the vehicle, they could have definitely shot him, which is kind of scary because he was just a lost German guy. And God forbid if they have shot him, that would have been like a huge deal. Like, a you know, an innocent German bystander gets killed in, on a U.S. base in Germany. Like, that could have been bad. So, luckily, there's security force members made the right decision and not opened up fire right away, right away and checked it out. And everything was cool. There was no terrorist threat. But I remember hearing that on the radio like, oh, shh. Stuff's about to go down. And when I mean when I say radio, I mean like the walkie-talkies that we use as cops to communicate. So I'm going to end DRG on that note. And I will definitely get more of these up as soon as possible. And I just want to thank you guys for being so dope, fresh, and digging the videos. And make sure you share them and thumbs them up if you really like them. It helps a lot and it means a lot to me that you guys do that. So um, I'll see you guys on the next DRG. And let me know which game you would like me to play in the comments below on the next one. And I'll see if I can try and pick it up from GameStop or something. So, peace on the streets. Sign.